Good evening, everybody. This is Ferdy from Falcon Talk, and uh, my guest for today is uh, Big Mick Thornton, Francis Ser Serrano, and Tom Gallo. You had to think about that one? Yes, I, know, I had right? to I think. Know, like, why were you saying my name in a remix? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, today's topic is, and I didn't even type it out, today's topic is martial arts, the big scam. And the challenges uh, change my mind. And why do I say the big scam? Because we are in an age where we have 30-year-old um, freaking grandmasters, 6-year-old black belts, black belts that couldn't even fight themselves out of a paper bag. It's like, uh, to me, the state of the martial arts has uh, gone kind of like downward. What are your why thoughts, do you think, gentlemen? Well, let me ask. Let me ask you about that, Freddie. Like, why do you think that's that? What, what what's uh, what what precipitated that to being like that? That's a big word. Mm, precipitate. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Actually, it's precipitated. Precipitated. Okay. What precipitated that? I think. I think there's a lot of um what, reasons. I right. well, yes, I am. But uh, one is um money. Okay. Money, money, money. You know, we have All the right. belt. We have the belt factories. Right. Right. The and are, they, are they belt factories or are they daycares? Oh. 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 Damn. Shot through the heart. <laughs> I like that one. I like that right. one. So, uh, me, as, uh, me personally, as a guy who owns a school here, also, also owns a school here, I have no, I have nothing against making money. Money, oh money, no no money, money I'm not up. I'm not um I'm not against that. Uh, okay. What I'm just saying is I have no problem with with schools making money. It's just that there's always a right way and a wrong way to make money. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I yeah. don't know if I'm making any well, sense. So. No, no, it's like this, okay? All right. Obviously um you we have three school owners in here, all right? Mm -hmm. And ultimately a school is a business. Right? So now when you're a place of business what you're getting paid for is to uh, provide a service, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And if um, if uh, the service is oh, we should add Duran on here too. And if this if the service you know uh, doesn't equal to the amount of money exchanged, there's now a big disservice. No, I think if the money. That is being exchanged for the service that you're not giving, that you say you're giving. Right. The amount of training that you provide is rough and tumble, so to speak. Let's do mm -hmm. tumble salts, jump up and do a kick, and you got a black belt. Right. Right. So it's it's the pride and honor to what you're teaching to the guys that got their X amount of degrees and realize, hey, I can bring kids in here. Sign them up for three thousand dollars, and in two mm -hmm. years, whether whether uh, they pass or fail, it's a no kid left behind program. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I look at it. Right. Hey, hey Duran. All right. Hey, I've added Duran on here, Mr. Duran. Uh, how are you, brother? How's it going, man? Good, good. Uh, Duran is also um a uh, school owner. He's, his school uh -huh. is uh, Blue uh, Blue Life Karate in. Uh, What's it? Maywood, New Jersey, and no, also Maplewood. Not or Maple, Maplewood. Maple yeah, thank you, thank you, Maplewood, and yeah, uh, Maywood is Maywood is outside of Hackensack. Yeah. And um, Duran is also a practitioner of um, Kali, that's right. a guy. Yeah. So I'm gonna um, have yeah. Ferdy recite the alphabet today because he's not getting anything correct. <laughs> <laughs> Maywood, Maplewood. <laughs> It's all the same. It's all the same. It's all the same. It's all. It's it's all the. Okay, so um, so Duran, you're listening into this conversation. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, I had I it originally. When, I caught it when I got a little uh, a signal that you were on, mm -hmm. so I jumped on. Yes, yes, and um, Duran, Duran has had also um. Uh, many um, broadcasts uh, referring to um, fake martial artists, and, fake uh, martial artists. and this I think this kind of like is a tie-in to it because we also did a broadcast where one of the dangers of being a fake martial artist is opening a school. 
And he, so uh, there's a lot of fake martial arts who actually, actually go ahead and do that. A lot of people get com a confusion with the whole concept of the uh, belt factory. Like there was a guy um, who um, there was a guy who runs a school who's pretty well known. I'll say that. Yeah, no he's names no longer, here. No names. Yeah, yeah. He's no longer. He's no, me out. He's no longer. He's no longer with us anymore. But what happened? He had. He used to run it. Run it. Run it to my parents and make statements like, um, "Well, at my school, we earn the belts. They're not buying the belts." As if he was trying to. They were trying to put my school down. Oh, you know? and and not not nothing is um is further from the truth because I witnessed um two promotions at at um Duran School and the black belt yeah, promotion was there for like six hours. <laughs> I yeah, was there for the six hours, and I had the ceremony. And and there was no joke. Yeah, but that same and, guy, I'm a, I'm gonna finish that. But that same guy, when my kids fought against his, they annihilated his kids. So you know, so much for the whole belt thing. I mean, there is a there is a business side to that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, one of my mentors had told me he had a, a question about situation talking about promotion fees, less promotion fees. He was actually trying to tell me that, well, Duran, maybe you shouldn't charge promotion fees and do one price. Now, what he used to do is that he was charging, I think, like uh, one ninety five a person and maybe uh, ten dollars off for the second kit, right? And he included everything. Now, I told him that. I couldn't do something like that because there's so many schools are in my, in, around me that would charge somebody's $49, $89, mm -hmm. $90 a month for karate mm -hmm. that I couldn't justify mm -hmm. charging $195 all inclusive so this people would ever be included. See, right, when I, right. You know, and there's a guy said they wouldn't accept it. Now, in his area, his school was down like in uh, like the Brunswick area. Mama Junction area, where it's, it's really, really big, it's really happening, and his school is like incredible. I learned a lot from him, mm -hmm. but I told that my clientele, because I'm so much near mm -hmm. these guys, that they charge what they charge, I couldn't do that. So mm -hmm. I do charge for promotion fees, so it ends up happening, but I streamline them. Mm -hmm. I only have four a year. Right. Four a year, which actually helps supplement some of the other the expenses that the, the school runs into. Right, right. And I've had a situation where you have people who has called my school, like a McDojo, or they try to call my school a like McDojo or something right, like that, right. and then you get the clients who come in and say, well, you know what, you're charging so-so this much, but this school's only charging $60 a month. You know right. what I tell them? Go there. Go to that school, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So let me just, just kind of jump in on that conversation. First of all, I mean, I think as a business, we base our price on our, on our overhead, not yeah, on what exactly. the other guy's overhead, right? So if exactly. my overhead is just happens to be a lot less than the other guy, well, that's not my fault. And why should I? Why should I? You know what I'm saying? It's like we're we're I'm not I don't care what you charge as long as as long as I I you know I'm covering my 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 expenses, then I'll be able to do that, right? I, so I totally agree with that. That's right. I totally agree with that. Because, because that's how you run a business. Listen, I'm going to yeah. post, I'm going to send you guys a poster of something that I made when people know, why is your price $100 a month? Well, here's the reason. Before you sign a contract, I want you to see my electric bill, my heating bill, my insurance bill, my Brother, alarm bill. Right, right. <laughs> Brother, with all due respect, and I'm not saying it's not, that's not a great uh, resource, but when my students ask me that, I say, go, just leave because I, I, I don't, I, I mean, honestly. What do you do, do is ask you what? And then they're like, when they ask me, like, how, why do you only, why do you charge this much and this guy charges it? Then go over there then. Mm -hmm. And well, then they're know, like, no, I, 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 no, I, I, so don't, I don't go that far. No, I do. I mean, no, I do because. I say leave. No, I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying that this is what I do. And this, I'm not saying it might work for everybody else, but I'm just saying this is what works for me. When they tell me, well, that guy charges only up, then you can go ahead and go to that guy right now. Bye. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, I was just asking. I'm like, well, that's my answer. Well, what I know, <laughs> when, I, when, I'm like approach, when I'm approached with that question and people come to me and say, why do you charge this much versus right. the person over here charging that much? I say, well, look at this. And, Ferdy, you can attest to this. I say, look, um, you get what you pay for. 
you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. I said, their school that you're talking about does not look anything like mine. They right. don't have mass and a four that I paid right. $190 each, and I have about 40 of them. You right. see the school, right, Ferdy? Oh, yeah. You you know, got a, well, I'm sure. Yeah, it's I'm sure huge. The yeah. I put in here, He's got a great the school. Nice decorations, right. um, the uh, equipment that I have for the kids to use, I make it a very enjoyable place for the people, and these places they're talking about that charges $60 and $70 a month, mm -hmm. you know that you know what that place is like? They're using it, uh, indoor-outdoor carpet for their dojo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're yeah they're probably the, 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 the place is painted. Yeah. Listen, the page is the page, mm -hmm. the place is painted, but there's another uh uh um there's another shade of uh, uh, paint. That's no, called they, dirt. They never primary <laughs> school. It's called dirt. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm not mentioning your names, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. And, 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 right, I completely agree. So for me, gentlemen, and this is why I say what I'm saying is because I, I I was taught this by a good friend of mine, and I will say his name, Pat O'Malley from Rapid Arnis in oh, England. Oh, right? England. No, Pat, yeah. too oh. well. Yeah, so here's what he Pat, told me. Who? I don't know him. Do I know Pat? him? I've heard of him. I've heard of him. If, if you haven't, you should, because he's, he's one of the greatest guys. He's over in different high schools together. Pat O'Malley told me this when I was starting my, when I was going to open my very first school. And I, I asked him. the name Pat O'Malley. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, yeah Rapid Arnis. Yeah, he's on Facebook all over the place. Well, anyway, so he told me this the greatest advice ever. He said that, find out what the Taekwondo guys charges. I'm like, okay. They charge <laughs> five times more than that. And, then, and I said, whoa, why do you say that? And he goes, because nobody's going to put value in what you do until you put value in what you do. I like that. Well, that and then, so exactly, when, when my, he is exactly, exactly right. I mean, because when my right. students come up to me and say, well, that guy charges 60 bucks and didn't go over there. I no longer need, I don't need to explain myself to anybody. You want, you're joining my school. You're not, I'm not, I'm not asking you to join mm -hmm. my school. You're asking to join my school. I don't need to, I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to prove myself. I don't need to audition. You want, then you go over there. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you all gentlemen right now. I have a, a good friend of mine. He owns a martial arts school down the street and he teaches FMA, his style of FMA. He's a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. But, and he, he has a, a professional studio. I teach out of my house quarters, okay? Even though I'm looking to get, house? I, I teach out of my house quarters, right? So I charge more, $30 more a month than he does. And he doesn't know why I can charge more than he can. Be and, I, wow. and I told him the exact same thing Pat O'Malley told me. Because I put value in what I do. So that, no, because if I can't put value in what I do, nobody else is gonna put value in what I do. No, that's right. That's exactly right. You have to put the value. You got, how, so how, this many, is how many students you have over there? I have, in, in the main school, I have 20. And at UCR, I have another 20. So about 40 students all together in my garage. Wow. There's nothing wrong with There's nothing wrong with that. Of course. But then you think about, gentlemen, think about my overhead. I have non-existent. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm actually in the process of looking for a commercial site because they can't fit in my garage anymore. This is the whole reason I just moved out of my home dojo. I have a 650 square foot home dojo mm -hmm. that I moved. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, it's a whole. It was my whole family room downstairs, mm -hmm. and we moved literally 1.6 miles away from my house on the same street. Mm -hmm. And I have a. It's, it's a small room. It's a 900 square foot opening because it's. Mm -hmm. it's I didn't think I needed something so big, but we're going to grow out of it pretty soon. Right. God, God bless the COVID thing. You know, people still come back from it, which I want right. to talk to you guys about that in a minute. Of course. But that's um, incredible. That's really good. I like hearing these success stories, guys. It's right. Good. Yeah, yeah just, because see, happens. See, my story. Let me tell you guys. I've had my ups. I've had my downs. Uh -huh. um, I started. I started Blue Life Karate. I started Blue Karate with no money down, no money mm -hmm. out of my pocket at all. Right. I started with three students. Right. And I, what I did is that when I got the three students, I told the three students that really taught me to open the school, mm -hmm. and I can tell you their names, uh, Leonard Danette, uh, Raymond Murphy Jr., mm -hmm. and uh, Keith Freitag. Now, Leonard oh, okay. and Raymond get, became black belts. Keith Freitag quit at Orange Belt, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen him in years. But what happened when I opened the school, I told each of those guys that they could give me um, they wanted me to teach. I told them that they gave me like, uh, let's say a thousand dollars, right? They could have mm -hmm. karate for the whole martial arts for the whole year. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. each gave me the money. I used that money to open the school. Mm -hmm. Then I told them that if they referred five people, 
mm-hmm. that I would give them the next year free. Right. And again, they, that okay. works for you. You know, I and mean, you know what happened? Let me tell you what happened. I'm they sorry, always, they referred five people. Hey, guys, uh-huh. they referred five people. Right? All right. Who's so that with the background noise? People, guess what? I told them the same thing. Uh-huh. And all those 15 people referred five people. Wow. And then that's amazing. I moved. Yes, that's how, that's how Blue Light Karate opened. And right. then I moved two months later because I outgrew the place. And at my peak in 2003, mm-hmm. 2004, 2005, I was about 328 students. Wow. Was, yeah, I was I was a big school. Yeah, that's you. I was in one spot for 16 years. And I learned from people like John Graydon, Nick Patakis. Um, uh, who else was showing me at the time? It was mostly John Gray, Nick Patakis, and that I can re- I can remember. Do what are you? Are, uh, are you friends with Paul Chang? I don't know him. Oh, no, Paul Chang from Philadelphia. I am. Yeah, Paul I, was, I don't know him. But Paul he is a great who was helping me man. back in the day. Yeah, he's got a nice you know? school in, in Philly. Yeah, I've been to his school. Yeah, because right now, right now, I'm just I'm just under right now I'm just under 150, but right this second I'm probably under like uh like like 60 or 70 because not everybody's responding and doing the class and just doing the zoom classes of course of right? course of course you know but the now, thing is is that i kept a nice school i kept it going and uh-huh. and i like what the other guy was saying because that's right you know no one knows what your expenses are and yeah. even, even regardless of what your expenses are you right. should know what your, your worth is exactly absolutely you know? exactly i mean because average, i mean I mean, you know, I don't know what everybody else's style is, but I'm assuming it's, uh, most of you guys are FMA. If not all of you guys are uh, FMA. Uh, everybody here oh, well, see, does I FMA. My school, okay. I, I, I don't teach MMA. I mean, uh, I don't teach uh, MMA. I don't no, teach F- uh, FMA. No. Filipino. I don't, teach, I don't teach FMA to, to children. I just started yeah. doing that, believe it or not. Right. No, I mean, no, my point here is that it's like what I'm just trying to say is that, you know, like anytime somebody, you know, tells me like, you know, why should, you know, why are you charging this? And I just said, just leave. No, mm-hmm. I don't even, I don't entertain their conversation at all. The thing about it is what you, what you found out already, brother uh, Duran, is that your students who find the, who understands the value will share the value. Yep. And that's how that's you start true. getting referrals. Yeah. So you right? sound like, you sound like a bitch. Try going to try going to buy a Bentley, you yeah. know, uh, and say I want to. Uh, could you give me like a uh, twenty percent off? They're right. Like, you don't want a Bentley. Oh. Yeah. Go buy a Mercedes. Go no. buy an Acura. Efren, I'm going to add you on. No, I'm still Filipino. I would have still got to get a Bentley and got a discount. Um, really? But, <laughs> you know, I'd be like, if I make you Sinigang, would you give me 10% off? I would I would totally do it. I would rock that. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is we got to start acting like what we teach is a freaking Ferrari, not a freaking Kia. You no know, offense to Kia. Right. If you want to sponsor me, Kia, I'll be more than happy to take your money. So but, there's where there's where Ferdy, that's a great analogy because that's what Ferdy was talking about earlier. Right. You're you're mm-hmm. going to sell the Ferrari, but you're going to teach the Kia. Exactly. And then for and then so then now, it's up to your ethical code, quote unquote ethical code, if you're going to do that or not. Right. Yeah, but I think I, did, I think people I, people I, will know BS. I think I think what? people will know people will start getting to smell the BS because you can only you can only lie to somebody for so long. That's right. right. So, so what I do, guys, is I created a curriculum from the from let's say from the white belt all the way up mm-hmm. to the to the uh, fourth degree black belt. Right, right. And it's systemized. And I don't know, Ferdy. I think I've showed you before. It's completely. Systemized. I think you sold it to Tom. Yes, I showed it to Tom one time. It's, it doesn't look like a lot of stuff, it's but it's Tommy systemized so I that it. once the person is able to do this. Then they wear the belt. Until mm-hmm. then, they just keep working on it. It's yeah. not like I can turn around and say, you know, I like you. I'm going to make you a green belt now. Right. No, it's a curriculum I have set up. And right. I've followed well, it should for be. 27 years. Well, how many of us here know Safe Allah? I know. Bless you. What was that? I heard the name. Was that the guy that was at the uh, at, at, at the park? At, at home? No, park? no, he wasn't. No, there. no, that that that's um, uh, JC. JC. Oh, Safe okay. Allah is this um, black Muslim guy. That he goes uh, a lot to the um, Atlantic City um, um, event. He does the Atlantic City thing. He does. Uh, he's, um, he's, he's from Philadelphia. He's from Atlantic City, right? I don't think you've met him, but he's from Philadelphia. I've met him. Are you? Are you? Don't get one. Are you friends with uh, John Crudup? Who? John Crudup. You know from the Philadelphia Historic Hall of Fame. John Crudup. 
Uh, he reached out to me about coming down here. Yeah, he just put a uh, article up for about a guy named Eric Blair, who was in a, a classic kung fu magazine just a day or two ago on Facebook. He did? That's that's Seifala. Seifala used to be Eric Eric Blair. Oh, okay. But the reason I brought Seifala's name up is when I first met him, uh, I don't know how many years ago now. It's a long time. He wore a white belt that was so dirty. That was a dirty belt, and mm -hmm. he just never changed it because he wore the white belt that he started with, and today it's like dingy and yucky. Mm. So, but I, isn't that isn't that the urban legend about yeah. the whole belt story? Like, I started to wear a white belt, but I kept working, working until he got dirty and he became black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I know the founder of judo. He actually put together. The yeah, it was. Yeah, was Jigoro dirty. Kano. But oh wow, okay. Yeah, but the but the whole concept behind that analogy is that people would say that you wear the white belt and you never wash it. You always wear it and, and train in it, and yeah. over so many periods. So many years, once it gets so dirty and dingy, it's black. Right. And that's how you're a black belt, basically. I, I kind of like that. I idea. do. But, but, it, but you know what happened? Even that, people even foiled that. I've had course. guys who used to take their, their belts and they wash them in bleach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you can't and they put stupid. the belt on and make people think, make people think that the belt's like that old. Listen, you I thought... Me? I thought my mother developed, developed the belt system because she used to put a leather belt, a rubber belt, nice. and, a, and a material belt on the bed and said, which one do you want? Because that's the one I was going to get my ass beat with. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my dad, he exactly. was like, whoosh, ready to put it out. He, he, he drew that belt out like Zorro drew out the sword. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, amazing. My mom, my mom, now she used the uh, chinelas, the slipper. Oh, uh, the chanclas. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, Tom's Italian. He, his mom probably put out a wooden stick and a, and a wooden roller. Spoon. <laughs> one, yeah, a wooden spoon. A wooden spoon. <laughs> no, my mom is, you know, my mom's a little bit, you know, up there in age, so she just, she just takes her hands out and makes me, um, and she just, okay, run into it really fast. So, it's my mom, so I, I gotta do what she said, right? Moms. So, yep. well, so, that's okay, why we so, love him. Okay, to, go, to go back to the primary question um, about, like, you know, like dojos and whatnot kind of stuff, right? Uh, what? My biggest thing. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. But right. My my biggest thing is the false security. Of course. Okay. But the problem. Yes. The problem okay. with yeah, martial security. arts. The problem with martial arts, as far as the business is concerned, is that while all we're teaching in class is theory. Mm -hmm. You know, because we can never duplicate life and death situation in class. Real life in this situation. We can add stressors. I get that. I disagree. I disagree with that. Okay, go ahead, sir. I disagree with that because there are a lot of people who have been taught things that have been passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down, and then yes, it becomes theory. Right, right? but sir, but sir, but then let me, the reason why I'm saying that is because if I mean, like for example, in the FMA, you know, lineage, it was taught by somebody. You know, it was founded by somebody who went to war with it. I get that. That that's mm. legit. That person is not teaching theory. They're teaching legitimate stuff. But the person that he taught or she taught never went to war. So for that well, person, it's I, I, still, I kind of still disagree with it. Let me it really. I've learned. See, I've only been in um, Filipino martial arts now for since what 2008 when I started. Okay. And the, the thing I had to contend with, and even when I first met Ferdy, is mm -hmm. that see the person, my first instructor. This guy named uh, the guy named Al Dennis. See, he was a correctional officer. He trained okay. directly with Leo Gahe. He trained I would, with right. He trained with Nene Tortel, mm -hmm. and he trained with Eddie Jaffe. Right, this right. This man was a correctional officer, and Al was breaking people up using stuff. And he was attacked by every possible shank, improvised weapon you could think of. This okay, Al so Dennis was. My let me let me, let me finish, what let me finish my statement. I'm sorry, sorry, my sorry. Statement is. That that very experience from what he learned, how he used it, he was actually teaching us. That was my first introduction to to this. I saw a different Filipino martial arts when I started taking what I learned from him and going. And I met Ferdy. We started me, him, and Tom started going out and getting in front of people who did their system of um of um of what they hey. called um you know FMA. Now, on March 14th, the seminar that Ferdy didn't get to go with me, there was a guy who took my seminar I was training with, and I had the guy from Nomads there, 
you know, the guy Royce Ramos, he was there, and um, his, his partner Frankie was there, and a whole lot of guys from New York was there. This one particular guy, he had a, a red KI uniform on with a black E, mm -hmm. and I was surprised he knew a little bit about stick fighting because I thought he was a jiu-jitsu person. Mm -hmm. He was so impressed with the stuff I was doing, how precise on the button I was, even countering his counting some of the stick movement and then taking it to the knife and to the empty hand and then mixing it right in with the pin chalk the way I was taught. Mm -hmm. When he made his speech that night, at, when he made his speech that night at the event, he mm -hmm. mentioned me because he said he, his mind was blown. Mm -hmm. And to me, what I was learning was basic because the stuff I was actually taught because of Al was based on what he actually used. Now, right. there's a lot of people I've learned who do this in theory. Yes, mm -hmm. I've seen tons of them. There, you know, there was a guy that, that was right here in um, Clark, New Jersey, I went to see him, and uh, Bobby, Bobby was, mm -hmm. uh, was teaching it over there. Mm -hmm. And I went there, they're doing a little module, stuff they're doing, stuff like that. I went back mm -hmm. and tried to talk to the guy about, he said, look, he's down in Maryland, and mm -hmm. I'm here in New Jersey, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that the Laundro Brothers? Yeah, the Laundro, Laundro Brothers. You know, and, and, and I was, and Tony lived around the corner from this person, and mm -hmm. when I saw how disrespectful this guy was, I told Tony, don't even come around the corner and meet this guy, because he's, you know, they're, they're saying, oh, we train with them, we train with them, but so the thing is, Freddie, you know our situation, you know, because I, I trained with, train with Al, and I saw things from a different perspective, mm -hmm. and then I started training with Tony, and Tony's just like, just like Al. You know what I'm saying? Well, they, so, both came, uh, they both so came from Nene. And, um, they both came from Nene. That's right. And Nene yeah. taught you how to actually fight with this. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. and a lot of people, they, they, it's to them, to a lot of people, it is theory. Mm -hmm. you know, it is theory. I, I know what I'm just trying to say, what I'm trying to say there, brother, is that how yes. can we duplicate that in the classroom? You can duplicate in the classroom. You can or cannot? I'm sorry. I'm you, just can. Understand. You, you can do it. Okay, but then where is the intent? Oh, we really wanting to kill that person. The intent's not there. You don't really want to kill your student. You don't have to. That's why. No, I mean, but that's my point, sir. I mean, and and, and again, we can agree to disagree, and I'll uh, be, be quite happy to move on to that. What I'm just saying is that as a teacher, yeah. I might have some backgrounds on life and death situation, and again, this is just hypothetical. But I still cannot duplicate that in the classroom because I don't really have any. I don't have true intention. Of really hurting my students. Mm -hmm. Well, well, you um, what, you what, what, um, what a student like, um, you know, outside, even outside of FMA, any um teacher any, that anything. wants to keep their yeah. students, yeah. Oh, sorry, the whole, the whole idea of, of like all this reality-based martial arts and stuff like that. Oh, you got to take. We're better than all well, your traditional because we're real. We're street. Right. You can't get to that point where. Listen, if, if I'm pissed, Freddie, you do it with the mother, right? The mother setting her child. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's the yeah the thing so, that I call, that I call it mother mode when I'm teaching, right. and um like I had one example. Remember, um Duran, you saw that when I had when that mother and that daughter. I was, remember that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the and um the um, yeah right there. I'm yeah. There. So the daughter I mean, the daughter was um yeah 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 so um yeah let me finish. So the daughter was a, a second Dan, Kajikembo, right? Mm -hmm. The mother, who was hot, by the way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the daughter was 18. The mother was like that. So so the mother um had no no um experience martial with martial arts. arts. I gave the right. mother a knife, right? And then I brought over a Hapkido guy, a fourth Dan Hapkido guy. And mm -hmm. I said to the mother, this guy wants to... Uh, I'm, I said, I'm, sorry, I'm going to be graphic. This guy wants right. to kidnap your daughter, rape her, and right. kill her. And the only yeah. person that's standing in his way is you. Are you yeah. going to allow right. her to? And she exactly. held that knife like that. And, and I said to her, like, one of the most, well, I say all the time, one of the most dangerous animals in the animal kingdom is a mother protecting its young. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. No, oh, hell yeah. yeah. No doubt about that. that. Level, you can't get that level of reality in, in a school situation. Well, right. because you do not want to harm each other. Mm -hmm. Although I know yeah. some guys that wanted to kill me. But mm -hmm. you, class, you don't but have to go that far. No, but, see, no, but, but I, then that's, saying, the, that's the missing element, though. That's the whole thing. Well, well, let me tell you guys this. this you can go 80%, maybe. 80%. Well, well let, 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 let me throw in something. Let me throw in something. Go ahead. 
Has anybody ever, uh, and I want to get one, has ever, anybody ever tried to use the shock knife? No, I don't yes. like it. Yes. I don't like it. So. Yeah, I don't like it either. It's a false, it's a false sense. It's, it's, it is? It's not, only, not only that, it's way too expensive and it's way too fragile. Mm. Listen, oh. here's the thing. Here's the thing with the shock knife. Most guys will feel it and they'll, they'll shun away from it and then the fight's yeah. not a knife fight anymore. Mm. And then it's... Right. When you get Sorry. the knife, when you get the when you get the when you get the knife that you put the chalk on it, and you're pump you're pummeling somebody, you're slashing somebody in a real knife fight, they're not really going to feel those things when adrenaline's pumping. Right. And the fight when the fight's over and they back up and they look at their sweatshirt or the t-shirt and they go, right, right, oh, shit, I've been stabbed and slashed so many a, times. A thousand times, exactly. That shock exactly. knife. As soon as they hear the shock, as soon as they hear the noise, they're not they don't want to get touched by it mm. anymore, which is right. a good sense to stay away from the knife. That's but good. Once you, but, but, but but once you're engaged in that closet, right. you're fighting in that elevator. Yeah. Right. There's no. There's no. The shock knife. You're just gonna sit there and be like. You're always so, fighting in the closet, aren't you? Yes. Right. Yes. I told you, Mike. I told you, Mike. <laughs> Let me tell you guys laughing. I have a student. <laughs> I have a student who had trained with me for a long time. Uh -huh. Now he was training on this stuff as I was learning. Al, he was learning it with us. I was training it, right? Mm -hmm. He came by the school this past um, no January first. That's right during our. Uh, Waffle with Sensei event. When Timson came to school, he wanted to tell me this story. In fact, Bertie, remember I put it on Facebook what he said. He told me a story. He was in Boston and at a subway, and he saw this guy uh, bothering women, and then he came to this this this, um, this other woman, and he stood in front and said, "Please stay away from her because she was pregnant," mm -hmm. right? The guy, he told me, pulled the knife out and said, you think you're a tough guy? And went to stab Timson. Timson reacted, reacted with the stuff that he was taught by us based on what Al Dennis taught. Not right. only did, 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 he, did Timson stop the guy's arm and mm -hmm. grab his arm, but he broke the guy's wrist mm -hmm. and his elbow all mm -hmm. in one motion, just right. during the move. Uh, you right. say you're, 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 you're not the... But you're mixing and, we don't, up two, and he's never gotten hurt in class. You're right, Tom. I hear you. Yeah, you're mixing up two different two different things. Yeah. One is what you're learning in class you're, mm -hmm. is going to work in the street. We all know that, all the stuff we teach. Right. Yeah. What, what, what Francis is talking about is you cannot get to the true level what, of, of... Life and death. Life yeah. and death, yes, in, in, in a dojo. The yeah, emotional it's, content it's, can only go so high. You can't get exactly. There. Exactly. And I'm not going well, to tell you, you guys something. See, I, I can hear what you guys are saying, but listen, I hear what you guys are saying. I've had, I've had students understand. use you the stuff I listen, teach. I, I disagree works. because I'm going to tell you something. All right, I'm going to a bathroom. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, of course you will. Just think of running water. Think of water. But look, look, but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but Tom, here. See, Tom, Francis, with me, there are two people live here inside of me. I mean, yes, when I start using, I mean, I'm talking about my Bjarni Jitsu, my Goshi Shan Karate, you know, my uh, Ninja Turtle system that I learned, all that stuff. When I'm not there and I'm fighting, if I got to fight with someone, I don't even know that guy. You know, I, I mean, I have been in karate competition and just regular competition and it gets heated. There's no, the only difference between a fight that I've had, all these hundreds of fights I've had, mm -hmm. right, is just the intent. But actually the fight's the same. I've had guys want to fight me for real, and they, and they, they're really playing them, and I don't know if they're going to try to stab me or whatever, you know. But I mean, I remember I got the one situation where the fight was over. One, and I I don't do this anymore. One kick to the neck. When I kicked this guy in his neck, he was done. And I didn't kick him and give him a bruise. He was done. One kick, because I've always believed every person got a plan. Like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan until they get hit, and yeah. I've actually hit people. So my thing is when I'm training. And the intent, that level of intent of, of a life and death situation, to me, is always that way. I'm always thinking in that mode. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you're not, trying, you're not but being, trying to instill I mean, that. I punch somebody. In, I punch somebody. If I actually punch somebody with my my taper knuckle, I'm gonna knock out 17 of their teeth. Then let me, ask you this, let me ask you this, brother. All the people that yeah. you've taught with that intent, how many of them are dead? How many of them are dead? Yes. You didn't, you didn't even on that. And that's my point. Then it's still, you still pull back a little bit. <laughs> well, of course. Uh, but the thing is, you can... See, that's no, the thing. See, this is a science point, teacher. Sir. You that's can my teach point, a person. person. I mean, How many, you, can, you, you, can, you can scare a person 
to believe in that, but as an instructor, we cannot duplicate real life and death because one, we care about our students, I two, have they it. pay our bills, and three, we'll go to jail. <laughs> I no, we're not going to go to jail because I don't, I don't take it to a point. I'm teaching a lesson, and I make sure the person gets it, and they want to see what a training night. Let me tell you something. You know those, those hard training nights that we use? Yep. Tom, the ones I use? Yeah, yeah, everybody. You know, right? If you're a FMA guy, yeah, you know yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. We, the all them, right? we all well, use see, them. When Al was training us, let me tell you something. When Dennis was training us, when I started doing that, I mean, I'm accustomed to what I'm a fighter. When Dennis was training us, he just put this training night on us. When he hit you with that knife, you really felt like you were stabbed. Because the same knife would kill you too. And you would just fall with it. You know, I had bruises like you wouldn't believe. And they could have been in my mind because I'm learning. See, because when you your subconscious processes things, so because I'm learning, I was like, oh my God, this is, I'm learning. I see how this works. And we're doing that. Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't kill the guy with the knife. Thank you. Okay, so the guy had the intent of killing you, but you didn't, have, you didn't kill the guy you with the knife. Him. Right? Well, well, somebody attacks you. Well, well, I mean, the way I look at it, the way I look at it is like you don't know what it feels like to really be stabbed until you've been stabbed. Been there, so I know what it feels like. No, I mean, no <laughs> my point here is Course, that yeah. you know, you can, we can tell them all we want that fire is hot, but until you get burned, you're not going to know what it feels like. Well, here you go. Here's one for you. I've been teaching firearms for the last 20 nice. years. Okay. Right. So, in the last. Eight to ten years, mm -hmm. I started training with the real sim munitions. Mm. Now, what, what, are <coughs> excuse me. what are those? They are man marker rounds. Like, say you have a full live, uh, I'm just going to throw a gun out there, Glock 19, mm. semi automatic Glock 19. You take that particular tool, you take the slide off, and you put the sim munition slide on. So you still have to lower up the gun. Right. The slide on the top only handles the sim munition rounds, it will not fire real rounds. Right, right, so right. when I first started learning this, it's like getting shot with a marble mm. full of paint. It's not like mm -hmm. a paintball, but it is. Right. So a yeah, it's like a frozen paintball, right? right. Yeah, so when you when you first get shot with it, and when you're wearing it, you're like, man, it doesn't hurt so bad. Well, then you got to realize you're wearing protective gear. So mm -hmm. as the years went on, we started only training with gloves and facial protection. So when you get hit, you're like, holy shit, does that hurt? Right. Ferg, you've seen the scars on me from the shots from those rounds, right. haven't you? No, I don't think I have. I don't, I don't you, you, you guys see each other naked all the time. Yeah, we do. It's we do? <laughs> but you know, <laughs> Tom, you're just <laughs> jealous. You're, you're jealous, Tom, yeah. right? Yeah. You're getting jealous again, Tom. That they do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, as long as you don't cross streams, you're good. So exactly. anyway. And you don't look each other in the oh, eyes. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> the intent to kill with that particular tool is probably the only thing that I've ever felt the real the real deal at it or let's put it this way we're all we're all above 40 years old correct yes so let's unfortunately go back to when, let's go back to when we started training back in the day as we call it when I was 39 no, yes, exactly <laughs> today, let's, now now let's take us in our teens to today Nobody trains with the emotional content or the physicality that we all came up with. Not too many people teach that anymore. Right. I agree with that. So, like, Dewan, Dewan might teach it. Tom might teach it. Francis, you might teach it. I certainly teach it. Right. I mean, Ferdy, you watched me last year at the seminar. How yeah. many guys did I say to punch me in the face as hard as you could? Yeah, I got it on film. So, I, I mean... How many, how many people do you see stand in front of a student they've never met a day in their life and say, if you can, punch me in the face as hard as you possibly can? Mm -hmm. so, then what's that for? What is that for? Is because yeah, Why would you do that? Because the guy, do, the guy doesn't, I'm crazy, the guy doesn't know me, he's never trained with me, and I just want to show that what I'd like to teach kind of works. Mm -hmm. So it's unrehearsed, the people don't know me, and like Ferdy says, we got it on tape, and when it happened... Everybody was talking in that room. And as soon as I said that, they all shut up. Nice, nice. So it proved the point real quick that it's not about the bullshit and it's not about the, the hey, look at me type thing. Right. What was, what was that? I have no Is idea. That's, that's my phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard that? Yeah, that was yeah. my phone. So the idea that will know what matter where I teach at, um, I always pick somebody I've never met in my life and mm. say, dude, as hard as you can, punch me in the face if you can mm. because I always talk about the way uh, 
Bruce Lee would have talked about timing and attack. Look for the preparation, the intention, right. the delivery. Right, right. If I can read that in the person who's been training his whole life, mm-hmm. it, it only makes me feel better that I've been, in my own opinion, been training my whole life to to, to see somebody's flaw that I can handle it really quickly. <laughs> if right. I get punched in the mouth, I go, oh, I won't ever do that again. Yeah, no, I mean, don't get me wrong, gentlemen. I mean, I'm saying, we can, I mean, when you're training, pain is a great factor. Pain Hell is a yeah. great training tool, right? When, you know, somebody's like, man, I keep getting hit there, then stop standing there. Move, mm-hmm. move, you know, kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, there, there is that. I do agree with that. Now, I, what I'm just saying is, is that because we can't, in my opinion, and with all due respect, brothers, in my opinion, because I believe that we can't really teach life in this situation, real life in this situation, is that, you know, they have to understand that, that there's there's that aspect of that, that what if in your mind will always exist unless you were able to finally put it to the test. Yeah. Now, I'll never wish that for any of my students, of course, right? No. But I'm just saying that that, for me, in my opinion, that's how I'm te- telling so, my students. So, Francis, how long have how long you been training FMA your entire life? No, no, I wish. That would have been awesome. I, would, I, mean, I was started training FMA in 1998, and I okay. started teaching in 2008. Okay, so I started in 96, 95. Nice, nice. Um, but let's take it back to the 90s. Ferdy, when did you start training? Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Ferdy, have you been doing the Fury Grandmaster training online? Yes, yeah, Oh, my okay. God. That, 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 you know what? That's okay, the not... biggest scam. Fury. Right, hold on, let's, hold on, let's, let's, that right, guy's the scam. Well, listen, Ferdy, Ferdy. Focus. Focus. <laughs> when did you start training in FMA? I don't know. 90. Uh, so we're all in the 90s. 90s, um, yeah. No, I'm, not me. Pure, I'm not 90s. pure um, seriously, in the 90s, but I, I did like dabble in it uh, when I was living in the right. Philippines. Yeah, well, playing with yourself doesn't count. Mm-hmm. So, Tom, when did you. Tom, when <laughs> yes, did it you does. Start? It's a uh, stick. Love is love, man. Love is love. I got married in the 90s. Five, unfortunately. So you started um, fighting as soon as you just got married. I got it. <laughs> yeah, so it was probably around 90... Okay, so other than Duan, we've all been in the 90s. So Duran, in, Duran. in the 90s, Duran, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Who recalls fighting with a rattan stick with no gear? Full core, full full contact. You know what? I think I well, did, but I can't remember anymore. You know what? I, I have it. I tell you something Too many else? shots to the head. But you, what, what are we talking about? Can I tell you something? I did that in the yeah. Philippines. <laughs> it was hey, crazy. Um, I know the guy who's trained with me now. Uh huh. Tony has a uh, fort. Tony McGregor has fought with with no um gear on, and he started in about ninety one, ninety two when he mm-hmm. first started. I fought with without a shadow of a doubt over sixty <laughs> matches, rattan against rattan. Nice. I have, now, and now, now is, here's. Hold on, let me finish. Let Tony me finish. McGregor got into a real fight in the Philippines, and they uh, confirmed it when he was here. He right. got into a real fight and beat the guy up, and they was they was fighting for real. Nice. With well, with knives. So what happens? To, what happens when I when I hear a guy that tells me, I've been training FMA since the '90s, so to speak. You know, the first thing I look for, scars on the hands. Mm. You know, any scar on on the forehead or so to speak or somewhere on the head because I've had my left middle finger and my left um, uh, ring finger compound fracture where the bones were sticking out on two separate occasions. Right, right, right. So been there, done that. I've right. had my I've had my head opened up, I've had my my, my eye eyelid opened up. Mm-hmm. So what form of FMA do you do? Um angry housewife. Nice. <laughs> so a a a um, I have done. I have trained in cross between you know of every you know in Santo. I have used to train with Remy on a regular basis when he was here all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, Edgar Salute uh, trained with him many and many oh, okay. and many and many a times. Mm-hmm. Um, and I moved into Rick Tucci over there at um, Princeton Princeton. Academy of Martial Arts. So over the years. You know, I've learned Illustrimo. I've learned. I, I've even gone into the Herman Sawanda route back when the C lot when he was doing his so-called FMA C lot mix back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so all these years, I've 
gotten rid of most of it and created my own little put together of it, so to speak. So I don't right. follow anybody's patterns or rules anymore. It's, it's kind of what I made out of it. Nice. So yeah. uh, I have fought with the Dog Brothers. I have fought with Sayak guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so- Sorry. Uh, <laughs> if you guys are familiar with the Dog Brothers in California, Mark, Mark Denny. I'm sure, yeah. Francis, you are. Yeah. Um, my Sifu and Chief and Doe, which is Tim Take, which I was asking Francis about if he knew right. him. Right. He actually introduced to Mark Denny back in the early 80s to wear a fencing helmet in full right. contact. So that's right, where right. the Dog Brothers got it from, from actually from uh, Tim Tackett. Nice. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I've been on the receiving end of the real stick one too many times. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm a pretty decent ground fighter. And, ha- and how I got good at the ground fighting, not to change the subject, is... When you get your wife on top of you and you call her by the wrong name, if you get under, get out from underneath of that, you're pretty good. Right. So, but, you know, we get off on our tangents like that. Oh, but, we uh, haven't had a tangent to, today. That's that's why we that's, that's why we get you to focus. We get you to focus, Ferdy, and then right. the tangent stops. Yeah, like I said, right, right, I was right. introduced. I was introduced this in 2008. And, and and with who? Under what system? Uh, I was. I was introduced to this by a correction officer by the name of Alan Denny. Oh, you just did say Nene. Okay, gotcha. No, no, he was taught by he was taught by Leo. He was taught by Nene Tortell, and he was taught by uh, Eddie Jaffe, and he was taught by uh, Leo <laughs> Gahe. Those are three guys he, he, he trained with. Right. And what happened is that as I met him, then I sought out I sought out other people. I saw Leo, and then I never met Eddie because he was dead already. But I got the front of the, the training that I got mm-hmm. from him. But then they had this guy who got who really who really uh, soared, mm-hmm. and his name was uh you know that's Tony McGregor. Well, I found out like you know Tony's like I found out it's like one of the highest ranking people on the Nene. You remember when uh Eddie remember when uh Greg Allen died, right recently? Tony started Birdie Birdie. Tony started giving me all these pictures to put up on Facebook. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Gray Allen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, these, and all these people, and all these people that saw me put the pictures, they were inboxing me, talking to me, and saying, um, you know Tony McGregor? The guy from Germany, all those people. They said, oh, my God. It, it, this one guy's on the phone a long time talking about what Tony did when he got to fight this guy in the super, some supermarket down there in the Philippines, some, some store, something like that. And, you know... Then this other guy that Tony doesn't like, this guy named Solis, Tom Solis, that mm-hmm. Tony's been looking for for a long time. He, he yeah, no problem, brother. That's no problem. Nice guy. Nice guy. He surfaced, and me and him started talking a long time. He's up here. He's been talking with, uh, with, with Tony. And um, Tony, he doesn't have a lot of these, like, so-called marks and things you have on. But on him. But like I said, he learned what he learned, and he he got the outlet. He started he started training me. But I, you know, when I started going out there meeting people, I started going out there meeting people. See, me thing is, I I'm probably the youngest in, in, in um I'm probably younger than Filipino martial arts than you guys in the group. But I've probably been training longer all of you guys because I've I've been training since I was five. And when I met Al, it wasn't like when I met Al Dennis, it wasn't a situation where. Let me see your style. Let me see my style. I, you know, he was introduced to me, and I tried him. I wanted to see how good he was. Yeah. Excuse me a, a second. Um, Duran. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Francis has got to like bow out. He's got to go. Um, you know. Okay. So, um, hey, Franz, Francis, if you, we do this every Friday, Francis, if you, you know, you're welcome to join us, we'll, we'll have like different subjects and, uh, it was great. This is like, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, you know what, Freddie, I gotta get a run too. Okay. So, but you should do this again. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. When they open the park, when they open the park, are you gonna let, are you gonna have that little get together that we had at Homedale again? Yeah. Well, I said I was gonna have it at my house, but, uh, you know. Hey, um, Francis, if you ever find yourself in the East Coast, in the tri-state area of uh, New York, um, Pennsylvania, and Jersey, bro, you're always welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm welcome in New York. No, thank you. Sorry. Stay out of New York. 
No, I appreciate it, gentlemen. And I, and I, and I, and yeah, if you guys are ever happy, just let me know. Yeah, we it's good. We got a new friend um to the uh, group and um. Right. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, and um, not only a friend but kapatid. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So like we'll have you on next week too. Um, you know, I'll yeah, let you know, sure. brother. All right, thank All right, later, brothers. All right, good night, night. Care, brother. All right, all right. So, Tom. Yes. What? Uh, when? What? What started you in the Filipino martial arts? Duran, you're still there. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, because I thought uh, you know. What started me? Uh, yeah, like what, what system did you get started in? Oh, um, I first I took up at a year. Uh, we don't care anymore. So Durant, no, I'm kidding. Well, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'm just talking because I really don't give a shit about you. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's so funny, man. Well, sometimes I think Mick should do. Mick should host it. <laughs> Guys, I gotta run. I gotta get up in the morning. Right. Take care, my friend. Oh, all right, you wanna, you wanna like um close this out. And we'll just take this offline. How many? Is there any people online watching? Oh wait, wait. How many people on here? Oh, seven. Seven. Yeah. Holy shit! So, wait, wait. Are there people on here? Yeah. Yeah, watching us. I'm, we're on Facebook Live. Oh, but wait a minute. This this is on um. This is on chat. This is on, yeah. This is on chat. What's and, the way doing it? Thirty. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what am oh, I? Oh, yeah, I see the people. Oh, and, uh, Andres is in it? Mm-hmm. Wow. Who? Who's in here? Andres, he didn't want to, I'm going to. Uh, oh, Ferdy. Ferdy, you you're not right. You wasn't reading some of the comments, man. What's it say? He says, Andres Reels, he says, putting value, yes, believing in what you teach. Why are you bringing in, Ferdy? Why are you just telling him to come in? Because he didn't want to come in. What? <laughs> That brain didn't want to come I'm in. I'm going to bring him in. Please. He didn't want to come in? Tell, tell him I said he's a stick. <laughs> he, 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 he can hear you. <laughs> no, we want so to. Tom, so, Tom, before before everybody got so rude on you, when, when did you start? Do I, do, do I really need to say this now, Bastard? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I got to run. Y'all go ahead. Go. 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 Wait, I thought you wanted to talk to Andres. All right, Tom. He, he, Tom, you have to call me on the phone solo and tell me personally. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you as soon as, uh, as soon as everyone shuts up. That's right. Damn it. I don't have such a flamboyant history like you. Um, but I, I started. Uh, I did like privates at uh, Nick's Chocolate School. For about a year, and then I the day I, I quit on a Monday. Oh, Andres is on. Cool. A t- Tuesday, and one of my students comes up to me and goes, "I met this guy that teaches his father-in-law teaches stick. I want oh. you to come with me." You don't have to put so the like, camera on. I was like, I don't know really much about it still. So I went with him uh, on a Wednesday, and we're walking around Long Island City looking for this guy, and we some old guy with a hat is sweeping. The Mr. Miyagi story. Yeah, right. <laughs> Shut up. So, we asked him where the stick class was. He goes, follow me. Takes his hat off. Hands us six. It was, um, Professor Danny. Uh, Angel Cabalos. Oh. Danny Paolo. No. <laughs> he, uh, he's under, uh, Vianese. And, uh, he's Who's washing guy. their hands or frying an egg? So we're taking a leak. Ah, oh, there you go. Taking a leak. Right. Was that it? Mm-hmm. I, I so, so, so Andres. Yes. What did you have to say about um the um you, you had Tom's, some... shit, Tom's story was boring. You just had uh, to. Uh, s- you asked, bro. <laughs> I said, I said Mick, Mick was talking about the value. The, the value <laughs> of uh, what do you call you? Had the value <laughs> of something you. I don't know. He pretty much reiterated what Francis said. If you mm-hmm. don't take value in yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh man, but that was that was that brain. Mm-hmm. I have no that. clue. What, no. So wait, didn't say any of that? <laughs> that brain said that. You didn't say that. Uh, I didn't say I said that. I said Francis said that. Mm-hmm. Tom, go back, go back, and talk about your man in the hat. I I like um that guy. I like Why? Francis. Boring. Absolutely. 
So who just came on, Ferdy? Andres. Andres. Hmm? You remember know, Andres was, from uh, the park? The... Oh, Vic is watching too. Hey, Vic. So, Don't talk so, to your mouthful uh, there, Ferdy. Everybody, everybody's home coming on late. Fer Ferdy. Yes, sir. Randy's still on? Where's Randy? Um, Duran, Duran left. Ferdy. Okay. Yes. Hold your breath for 13 seconds so I can hear what he's going to say. Where, where did we meet? Oh, I met you at the barbecue. Uh, oh, okay. In uh, Homedale. Okay. Uh, New Jersey. Awesome. Mm. I was talking shit there, too. Mm. Before count. You always talk. A blue shirt. Mm. Cause he's got a he's got a flamingo up there. I don't know why. He's got a flamingo up his flamingo? Oh, It's a crane. Or a man. crane. It's a blue heron. Man. No, it's a flamingo. No. I'm from Florida. I was originally from Florida. I grew up in Miami, so it's a blue heron. And you live in where? New Jersey. I live in Nutley now. Yep. What the hell's wrong with you? you no. Know. I married a Jersey girl, man. Jeez. I had hand shovels. I had shovels since I was 33. <laughs> Nice. No, I, how how I met Andres is really cool. Is that um, yeah? We, we don't really care. So we were both. Tom, go uh, back to the guy with the hat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute! This is my show. <laughs> Lord Almighty! All right, go back to the hat guy. Go ahead, go ahead, Tom. The guy, little man with the hat, sweeping the floor. It was really yeah, chopsticks. Oh, this is the Ozzy story. I don't want to hear. Listen, it. not listen. telling you guys. So anyway, I studied several different. So, Ferdy, what about you? Were saying that how'd you meet him? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, Andres, um, Andres, uh, and I were um, assisting this guy in teaching um, martial arts to uh, the special needs children called the Special Dragons. Something okay. that I it was like, I thought, you know, That's it was kind cool. of like really, you know, even bad. And let me tell you, some of these kids they grow on you. They really grow on you. Just it's like kind of Tom. It's like Tom. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Tom's a different oh, breed. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. My wife said, who said something smart about a Jersey girl? <laughs> oh, now you're going to read the freaking comment. Who said that? Who said mm -hmm. that? that was it me. was, I, it I was Vic. I mean, I'm going to bring Vic. Let me see if Vic will come on. Listen, I didn't marry a Jersey girl. I married a Jew, so it's, it's almost the same. Mm -hmm. She likes Jersey. Yeah. Jersey ain't bad, man. Like, look, the pizza, the bagels. You, you don't have this shit in Florida. Like, no, you don't. Oh, you got better you shit in Florida. I'd rather be in Florida. You don't have it in Jersey either. It's only in New York. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, oh, screw you guys. Listen, oh, the, the only reason it's in New York bagels. is because the, the, the crusty, the crusty bubbies live there now. The who? The crusty bubbies. Grandma. Hey, hey guys, say hello to Vic. Vic, you can turn your camera off. <laughs> okay. How y'all doing? We're all good. On, Vic? How are you? Yeah, Vic, hey, Vic. Vic is um Vic has got this really cool gym. It's called Southpaw Gym in Neptune, New Jersey. And it's really nice and it's got a ring and everything. And uh Vic um Vic is also a, a retired C CO and uh he's done Filipino and C Lot. Nice. Yeah, welcome to the party, Vic. Thank you, thank you. Vic, I want to ask you something offline. Um, okay, then we'll save yeah. it for offline. <laughs> hey, my wife said, who's talking stuff about Jersey girls? Andres is. Nah, no, man. I... <laughs> yes. We, we, I married you. We, we, we can, um... I'm like in it for life. <laughs> There's that song, Jersey Girl, right? I know the feeling. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Vic, what type of what type of uh, FMA did you start learning when you were starting? Uh, I started with uh, Guru Don Cuesta when he was a guru. Okay. Uh, oh, Dos Cipares. Jersey City, Dos Cipares. And then I went to uh, Rick Tucci's back in 89. Sorry, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Wait, yeah. you went back in 89? Yeah, I, I started in 89 when I was a CEO. I was there. For like nice. Years. And then uh, I met... Uh, what, what, what happened was... After a seminar with uh, Grant, uh, Seafood Larry Hartzell and Bert Whitson, I started talking to them, and I met some other guys, and we formed our training group in Ocean Township, New Jersey. We would send for them to train us on the weekends, and we had uh, Grandmaster Richard Bastillo, Tim Tackett, 
Uh, oh, hold on back there. Yeah. <laughs> you just you yeah, just ma- you just made the magic name. Yeah, you did. Well, listen, I was with um, Richard right before he died. So, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, so you, know, you know Chris Ascari? Uh, who? Chris Ascari. He's uh, certified under uh, Guru Rich. Rich, 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 Rich. Where's he? Where's he out of? I don't. I don't know the name. He's out of. Uh, he's he's out of Ocean Towns, out Ocean Towns, New Jersey. But he's uh, his his kid. Uh, you heard of Dung Tom Dragon? Um. Tom, did you Tom. say Tom the Dumb Dragon? No, no, Tom, Tom, no, it's called Tom Dragon, T-O-T-O. Sounds like a Chinese restaurant. T-O-N-G Dragon. I know, I'll take a number six. <laughs> Tom Dragon is where he's, uh, No, I don't know him. No, that's a gym, no. that's, a, that's a school. Well, you know, you said, you said, uh, like, first Good you said stuff. you said the massive name, the, the magic first. name of Tackett. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Tim Tackett ain't no joke. He's a punk. He's a punk. Yeah, he's sensitive, all right. That's why I send them tissues all the time, that fag. So, uh, I have have Tackett's front door key on my keychain right now. Uh, Yeah, that's it. Well, y'all, yeah, yeah. everybody has different experiences with different instructors. I don't Listen, I I run the East Coast for Tim. Oh, okay. I run the East Coast for the Wednesday night group in the Chinatown group. Mm. Vic, oh, okay. Vic was supposed to be at the, um, at the park, but he couldn't because he had to go to a wedding. Oh, okay. No, Tim, uh, I've been, Tim and I have traveled the country together since 2005, maybe? Wow. Okay. Me, Tim, and Jim McCann, if you know who Jim McCann is. Yeah, okay, I know who Jim McCann is, yeah. Yeah, so Jim McCann and I have been partners for years. So you know Ray Longo and everybody. Oh, uh, Long Island? No. <laughs> I don't know him. <laughs> Excuse me. Is he Wednesday night group guy? No. no, no, I don't know if he's uh, in the group. I just thought that you might know him because that's why I met Tim Tackett at Ray Longo's and he's, um... Oh, he, yes, Ray Longo and then he was with, um, um, uh, Keith Allen used to go there. Okay. If you know Keith Allen. Yeah, yeah. Well, he committed suicide last year, so. Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes, he did. So. I know that. Wow. Yeah. What a shame. He's a nice dude. Great dude. Funny guy. But, uh, um, Tim, we just did Tim's retirement party a few years ago in uh, Redlands, California. Okay. So okay. we were all out there. And, I, and the reason I was with Richard right before he died is we were at um, Bob Bremer's funeral. Oh, okay. So. Wow, wow. all the old, old guard is passing away. Wow. Yeah, man. Bro, Bob's gone. Richard's gone. Jim Sewell's gone. Um, who else is gone? Jerry Petit's gone. Yeah. Jerry Petit's gone? Yeah, he died yeah. a few years ago. We're... You know, Larry Hartzell's been gone for a while. Oh, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's him. Just, uh, just don't mess with his daughter. Larry's daughter? Yeah, that's an off-the-air conversation. Mm. Yeah, the right. filament in that bolt doesn't light up too bright. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, uh, Mick, um, Vic's also trained with uh, Eric, Eric Paulson. Oh, God, that other queer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I trained with uh, him and Tom. I've gone out to a CSW camp uh, two or three times. and I've gone out to Guru uh, Dan's for the Silat camps. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, too. Yeah, I just do, you know, I travel here and there when I can. I love, like, when I see, when, see, when Dan sees me, he, first, if, if we went to the room together and, and I walk in and Dan walk, sees me, Dan walks up and goes, shut up, immediately. <laughs> he doesn't let me speak. I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Richard Bastilio told us a story that he... Um, Inisanto and, and, uh, Hartzell, Inisanto and, um, um, Bastilio all had an apartment together. And Hartzell, when Inisanto would come over, when Danny would come over, Guru Dan would come over, he'd fall asleep, pass out on the couch. And Hartzell would, like, bare ass fart in his face. And to hear Richard Bastilio tell this story of how, how Guru Dan would sit there and, like, clap his lips in his sleep, it, you'll piss yourself, you know, 
Well, well, that story you said you told um the other week uh, about Richard Bastilio, that sounded yeah, well, hilarious. Definitely, definitely doesn't want to. We don't want to put that on. Okay, the, okay. You know what? I'm gonna sign off on this, and let's we'll continue this conversation here. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Hold on. All right. I want to thank everybody for um for um joining us, and um yeah, we didn't have to um we didn't have that much of a tangent because uh. We wouldn't Other people, they wouldn't let me talk, but this is Ferdy Falcon Talk, and uh, join us next week with the same motley crew. Good night, and have a great weekend.